Hi, I'm Brian, and I am a developer advocate here at GitHub. Go by Bdoggy, so you've probably seen him around. Maybe you haven't. Um, check out the uh, the link here. No, I'll put it here. Actually, I'll put a card here. I should probably just move on. Hi, I'm Brian, and I am a developer advocate here at GitHub, and I'm gonna talk about tips for contributing to open source and maintaining your projects. Without further ado, I'm gonna jump right in. So first up, I just wanna talk about the contributing MD. Contributing MD is gonna be the sort of gateway, the doorway into your project. This will be the place where maintainers and contributors alike will find relevant information, but also guide and lead them into how to contribute to the project. Now, most people consider the readme as the doorway, the entry point into the project, and that is correct. Uh, but that's also the entryway for consumers of the project as well. Um, so information on how to actually clone the repository and what the next step is for getting it involved into your local environment uh, is key. So having that those details inside of contributing MD and try to have those details uh, laid out in a way that anybody can walk in and have all questions answered makes it very helpful for the contributor. So highly recommend consider having your contributing MD set up in a way that you uh, it could be discoverable um, by simply calling a contributing MD. And as well as a, a contributor, a potential contributor, if you're looking to contribute to a project, uh, this should be the one of the first places you look. Uh, it's gonna have all the relevant information that you're looking to accomplish. It's also gonna have very key insights on how to open issues, how to claim issues, also how to announce uh, that your PR is ready for review. So highly recommend uh, not only having the contributing MD, but also check to see if it's there and leverage it as your single source of truth. Next up, I wanna mention joining the conversation. Now this is, sounds kind of weird, but maybe it's not weird. Uh, a lot of open source projects have made the jump into places like Discord and Slack, and a lot of that's linked within your readme contributing MDs. But not a lot of contributors are aware that these environments for synchronous conversation are, exist or can happen. So in order to avoid things like asking open-ended questions on issues or trying to provide quick feedback or try to receive quick feedback on things that you're stuck on, open source, you can find an array of projects that have met that criteria. Those are probably also projects that are leveraged pretty heavily in things like Act Oktoberfest and are labeling the issues with either good first issues. Check out where the conversation's happening. I also wanna recommend not all projects have this yet, but we have a new feature at GitHub, which is called Discussions. Uh, and in, in these discussions, there's gonna be a, t it's a tab directly in the repo. Uh, and this is also gonna provide a lot of insight on contributing to project, it's gonna provide insight. So here you can see Next.js has links to uh, past releases of the different versions, but also even context and conversation around future releases. If you have an idea for a feature, if you have an idea for how to approach uh, even how to contribute to a project, those discussions, that's the place where that discussion that can happen. And this is gonna be the difference between having that async conversation outside of issues, but in a place that it's welcomed. But then also Discord is gonna be, and Slack is gonna be the place where you have the asynchronous conversations. I also wanna point out that discourse is also, hopefully I'm announcing it, I can't even unsee that. Hopefully I'm enunciating discourse and discord separately. Those are two different things, but discord will be the synchronous conversation. Discourse will be your async conversation, very similar to, to GitHub discussions. So if there's a discussion tab or a discourse link, check those places to find, to get that insight on the project. To summarize, join the conversation in all those different ways. So the next thing is gonna be adding inline commit suggestions uh, inside your PRs. Now, one of the biggest pain of being a maintainer is actually getting reviews and needing to make small changes to the project because maybe something was this nuance that that the contributor didn't understand this or contributor didn't have access to um, that information. So perhaps something was spelled wrong, something was labeled wrong, or maybe the comment which is off by one line. Instead of having the contributor go back and rebase and do all that other stuff. You can actually do this directly in line inside the PRs. So here in the video, you can see me actually leveraging this tool right now and providing the inline commit suggestions, but also adding a code block. Uh, you'll see that you can actually add a code block directly inside of the comment. And that comment itself, because you've leveraged that tool, you could actually commit that directly into the PR instead of, again, cloning locally, and doing it yourself, you just do it directly in the PR. So how I recommend if you do have a small change, uh, even as a contributor too, if you need to make a small change and something was said in the comments, you can actually make the suggestion yourself as well. 
So check it out and uh, wow your peers with inline commit suggestions. So the next thing I wanna actually mention is just gonna be around notifications and how to manage them, but also how to leverage them as well. First off, I do wanna highly recommend leveraging stars, bookmarks. So if you wanna actually star a repo and put it over to the side, so perhaps you're working during the week, but you only contribute to open source on the weekend, star the repo and then head over to github.com slash stars and you can see all the stars you've actually contributed or you've actually saved uh, throughout the week. Uh, I'm doing this right now with the graphical repo. I hit the star, head over to github.com slash stars, and then I can see that the repo's there waiting for me to contribute to it. So leverage stars as bookmarks, uh, and I think it'll be, <laughs> uh, it'll be more beneficial. The other thing I wanna mention too as well is the notification tab. So if you navigate up to the header, you can actually see that there's a notification bell uh, inside of your logged in state at GitHub. Uh, if you click that, you can actually see all issues, all PRs that you're assigned or you mentioned or you're participating. Participating is a term that's not clear, uh, but it's if you have a comment or if you've contributed to that issue or PR in any way, uh, you're quote unquote participating. Uh, but this gives you a really good way to actually navigate and see if maintainers have responded back to you or if contributors have responded back to your questions. Uh, check out the notification tab. I also wanna point out, Notifications is the same, that this notification tab is the same as the GitHub mobile app. So if you don't have the GitHub mobile app, definitely check it out, download it today, Android and iOS, and manage your notifications at the comfort of the palm of your hand. So the next thing is save replies. Uh, I don't know how many people are aware of this, but if you have a common response for issues and responses, uh, why not just store that into a save reply? Here, I'm actually storing a save reply for responding uh, to folks for opening up issues and letting them know that they can actually confirm that they read the contributing MD by just providing a rocket ship reaction. Uh, this is very helpful because it also uh, gets the interaction going. Sometimes people open up issues and forget about them. Uh, but if you get a little response, they'll show up in their notifications They'll remember they did that. And then we can sort of move on and try to figure out how to solve this issue. So for the replies that you're repetitively responding to uh, in the same sort of manner, just throw it into save reply. Uh, and then, and hopefully that'll cut down your keystrokes. Uh, the next thing's up is the triage role. The triage role is actually something that I'm super excited about. It's not something as common with all projects. Uh, some projects have taken the, the different distinct roles and actually attributed them to teams within in the organization. So for example, uh, one project that's doing this very well is the Express project. And the Express project itself is has a triage role for folks to onboard into the project. A lot of times contributing code can be daunting, uh, but it can be very helpful if you do something that's a little more familiar, which is labeling issues and marking them as read or complete or invalid. Like all this is super relevant uh, and it's sort of like the way to express your way into contributing into the project eventually. Pun intended. So. If there is a, if you do navigate through the contributing MD uh, or the README and you see things like triage role or reviewers to review pull requests, uh, which is a whole nother um, way to onboard into knowing how to navigate the code base. Uh, but I do recommend like this reviewing the PR, you don't have to leave a comment, but it's a great way to understand how the project works. It's just jumping into the PR and looking at the code that someone else has changed. Uh, you're gonna find insight on how they navigated different things for the project but also just the language. Uh, some people do some really cool things in JavaScript and Ruby and Python, and you might not have seen that before. So uh, if you don't know where to start, just look at some of the code that's already been done. Next thing I gonna mention is search tips. So GitHub has a pretty powerful search tool, uh, and GitHub is a very big project, trying to find different content and context, and perhaps you're just looking for Hacktoberfest labels. Uh, you can actually do that pretty easily just by going to github.com slash search. Uh, this is all gonna be also gonna be the same search bar that sort of is sits in the header of the, I said header, I meant nav bar. So this is gonna be the same search bar that sits in the nav bar, but if you just want a sort of a clean ex omni bar experience, you can go there. But the reason I say go there is because if you click the prefixes link on underneath the search bar, you'll see all these different examples of ways you can search within the code base. So if you're looking for all cat repos with more than 100 stars, you can get that directly in an example right there. But I'm just gonna actually type in all issues that have a label of Hacktoberfest and see that there's over 90,000 issues out there on GitHub. Uh, that's a lot of issues. So the cool thing about this is I can actually add to my search with more prefixes. So I'm gonna look for all issues that are not assigned. 
because if they're not, not assigned, there's a good chance that they're ready to be contributed to. And it looks like it only dropped down a little over 10,000. So there's a lot of work to be done. And I hope that you're excited to work on Hacktoberfest um, labels because you literally can, there's, there's tons and tons of stuff that you can contribute to. Finally, the last thing, uh, last thing I wanna mention is fetching uh, and pulling from upstream. Now, there's a concept of having your fork of the repository, and the actual origin of that fork is gonna be called an upstream. If that's not clear, there's a lot of documentation, there's a lot of cool uh, intro to GitHub and Git guides uh, that explain this better than I just did. But if you wanna keep your fork up to date, a lot of times what people do is they delete their repo and then they refork it and then reclone it. I highly recommend don't do that because you're gonna lose all the context, all the work you've done locally. Uh, sometimes you wanna experiment on multiple branches to see how to uh, attack a problem or an issue. Uh, so instead, I recommend checking out your remotes and then make sure if you've cloned it recently, you will have a remote called Upstream. Uh, you can actually pull directly from Upstream. So here you can see I'm pulling from Node.js uh, and then with Node.js, um, I'm gonna get the latest changes from mas to master and then I can push those changes directly back up to my origin, which is gonna be my fork. No longer do you need to actually delete the project or delete the branch or the pull request. This is also pretty effective too if you wanna push changes direct back to your branch that you're working on. You don't have to delete the PR or create a new branch or a new PR. Just push back up to the branch and it actually updates your PR in GitHub. GitHub's smart enough to know if there are changes in and it pulls it in from Git. I do wanna mention there is a GitHub action that does this for you, which is called Fork Sync. Uh, it's made by TG908, so shout out to them. Uh, wearing the Hacktoberfest shirt literally in their in their profile picture from last year. Um, but I mentioned this because this is actually gonna keep your forks up to date. It's gonna open a PR, it's gonna let you know that there's, there's changes on the upstream, and you don't actually have to do this locally from the command line. If you happen to be a GUI user or you do all your Git commands uh, directly in like something like VS Code or GitHub Desktop. And the idea there is to, as a maintainer, if I add this into my project in the upstream, I can actually filter this out and not have it run on my project. It could actually just run on forks. Um, so again, check out the, the, the GitHub documentation on how to do that. Uh, leverage this action. If you don't know about actions, you can go to, to the documentation or you can just click the action tab uh, on your repo and it'll tell you everything you need to know. Um, so I bring that up because definitely check out actions. Actions are all open source too as well. So the majority of them are. And those are all pretty much welcoming open source contributions as well. So if you look into work on a project that has a smaller scope, maybe not as big as a project like an Express.js or a Graphical or a Vue.js, check out GitHub Actions and see if there's any opportunity for you to contribute there. If you just wanna hit me up, ask me questions, I'm BWEO on Twitter. I'm also BWE on GitHub. Either are valid platforms to hit me up and ask questions about. If you wanna work on my projects, I'm happy to take contributions. So with that being said, enjoy your month of Hacktoberfest and happy hacking.